Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got a great conversation for you today. Wireless networks are going through a paradigm shift with the emergence of OpenRAN. This new approach to architecting a multi-vendor network fosters innovation, agility, and cost efficiency in deploying and operating 5G networks. More importantly, it serves users better and faster than ever. However, there are mixed opinions in the industry and varied approaches to materializing the vision of OpenRAN. Today, we will speak with Samsung's Sunil Ramachandran, the Director of Technology for the Networks business. Sunil is our in-house expert on OpenRAN and the Samsung representative to the ORAN Alliance, the industry consortium developing open standards for mobile telecommunications radio access networks. Welcome, Sunil. Thank you for having me, Kelly. So OpenRAN is a hot topic these days. Can you explain to our listeners Open RAN and the distinction between Open RAN and ORAN? As you mentioned in the opening statement, Open RAN is a paradigm shift in the RAN architecture, where the traditional monolithic RAN is disaggregated into smaller subsystems with open interfaces. This open interfaces enables the network operator to select best of breed systems and integrate them together to a true open RAN system. ORAN or ORAN Alliance is a worldwide community of mobile network operators, vendors, research and academic institutions working together to write specifications to define and test these open interfaces. ORAN Alliance also focus on uh, certification as well as open source software for RAN in collaboration with Linux Foundation. So Open RAN is an architecture while ORAN is the body or consortium who's defining the interface definitions for those architectures. That's a great distinction. So the industry supports both single vendor open RAN and multi-vendor open RAN. Can you explain the difference? Open RAN can be realized in a single vendor or in multi-vendor. The main idea of open RAN is to allow flexibility for the operator to select and mix and match when there is a need. In a single vendor open RAN, the, all the subsystems come from a single vendor, but these subsystems support an open interface to prepare for a multi-vendor environment in the future. While in multi-vendor open RAN, the, some of these subsystems come from different vendors. Uh, both are open RAN systems, while multi-vendor open RAN requires a system additional system integration effort. Other than that, both are open RAN systems. What are some of the key challenges facing open RAN deployment and adoption? How is the industry working to address these challenges? Yeah, I mean, open RAN is a new architecture, different from what uh, operators are used to today. Right. So there is a learning curve and time that is associated with just like any new technology. There is a system integration effort that needs to be undertaken when it comes to multi-vendor open RAN. Since this open RAN is a new technology or an architecture, it, it needs to do a lot of interoperability to testing to get it right. And industry has done great strides in the open interoperability aspects. We have created a strong ecosystem of partners. And what we do is we pre-integrate the system and validate our solution up to 80%. That takes a lot of responsibility out of the operator hands and enables them to deploy Samsung Open RAN systems with the timer with faster time to market. While others may downplay the benefits of the technology, we believe that it is important to op- to embrace this open architecture, which offers the, our customers the optionality. The payoff for the whole industry is much bigger when in, in long run. So we talked a lot about the benefits of Open RAN, but how does Open RAN differ from VRAN? A lot of people confuse the two; they use them in the same sentence. Can you explain the difference? Interesting question. As I mentioned, Open RAN in, uh, is a RAN architecture where the RAN subsystem is disaggregated with open interfaces. VRAN is also a type of RAN architecture where the RAN software is disaggregated from the RAN hardware. So this both VRAN and Open RAN can coexist and complement each other, just like in Samsung solution. These are two separate independent architecture. For example, we work with many global operators and deployed virtualized RAN and Open RAN. At the same time, there are some cases where we have deployed Open RAN compliant hardware without virtualized RAN. That's a great explanation. So are there any regulatory or standardization challenges associated with Open RAN? And how does the industry address these to ensure global compatibility? One of the key aspects is the interoperability. The interoperability needs to be addressed with the Open RAN. The industry has made great strides uh, by, uh, for addressing interoperability by defining the interoperability, uh, the IoT specifications, along with uh, the conformance test specifications. Uh, by defi- at the same time defining the specifications for the open interfaces. But 
it's not perfect it's not as a as a plug and play as of now there is an effort but there is a right focus from the industry in an effort to help interoperability further or an alliance has made open testing and integration centers or otics as a priority to foster this there are more than maybe 17 or so otics officially approved by oran as of as of october the specifications are maturing and there is a right focus and i think the industry is in marching towards in the right direction so there's a lot happening in the industry as it relates to open ran can you tell me more about samsung's contributions to open ran we have been at the forefront of expanding collaboration with industry players to create a strong robust open ecosystem and these partnership vary from say commercial off the shelf servers container platforms uh front hold solutions or so back hold transport solutions uh cloud servers and so on our open ran ecosystem allows for a fully interoperable approach to open open networks with various options for the operators we have validated the interoperability among various uh partner solutions and have demonstrated telco grade performance in commercial networks according to dell oro open ran research samsung is named as the market leader in open ran analysis mason another telecom consulting research leader recently wrote, wrote that samsung is influential in the oran space because of its significant radio expertise and credibility with brownfield operators in the background we also contribute a major a majorly contribute on the specification aspects we have been a, a major active participant in oran alliance and as part of oran alliance uh, when we were even part of the oran alliance from the day it was formed as a merger of Siran Alliance and Extran Foundation even in Extran Foundation we were at the forefront of advancing the open front door and other open interfaces and we also have uh, working group co-chair positions were in in Oran Alliance apart from the Oran specification body we also play a significant role in the open source community we were uh, elected as the official member of uh, technical oversight committee for open source uh, project open source community the Oran Alliance i believe took place a couple of weeks ago, right? The Oran Alliance meetings. Um I understand that at those meetings several split options were discussed. Can you explain these split options and what makes 72x significant? Oh uh, sure, yes. Uh recently there have been a lot of discussion around the new split options that is to move additional functionality or functional blocks from the ODU from the digital unit to the radio. Uh for specifically for the massive MIMO use case. this would make the radio far more complex and expensive as an early adopter of the open ran system samsung has been a, an advocate of maintaining backward compatibility so that new addition to the specification does not fragment the open ran ecosystem on the other hand option 72x which is the current split option which provides the right balance between the front hold bandwidth requirement and the radio complexity when 72x was uh, formed or defined almost 5 years ago in during extran one of the main goal was to keep the radio complexity to a minimum 72x allowed split allowed the radio to be simple while reducing the front needed front hold bandwidth requirement uh, compared to the proprietary option 8 split so the idea of keeping the radio simple was to enable new players new entrants to the market to create a robust robust ecosystem of suppliers this robust ecosystem of suppliers will in, in in turn drive innovation and drive down the cost for mobile operators so those are the significant benefits that still have that the 72x have so has samsung deployed 72x in commercial networks with massive mimo radios and have we been successful there oh yes yes we have commercialized uh, massive mimo radios with the 72x split in the united states and other markets the field performance has been great our customers are happy performance has been on par with the, the or exceeding than that of the traditional or proprietary split based ran one thing to note here is that the open ran or oran defines the interface specifications that does allow vendor vendor definite differentiation within the implementation so not all open ran radios will perform the same but with our years of experience in the radio technology we have perfected the ma- massive mimo implementation and it's delivering telco grade performance to our end customers. So how does Samsung see Open RAN evolving over the next 3 to 5 years? What new capabilities can we expect from the the global leader in Open RAN? Yeah, I mean, Open RAN is still expected to account for more than 15% of global RAN market by 2027. And we are continuing to see a lot of interest from 
major operate, operators around the globe. At Samsung, innovation is in our DNA and we are committed to advancing Open RAN in collaboration with the mobile operators globally. And we deliver the Open RAN and virtualized RAN systems in commercial scale. We are making tremendous progress in US, Canada, Europe, and in Asia uh, by deploying large scale open RAN networks. And upcoming in few coming years, I, we expect to see more of that. Sunil, this has been so informative. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me, Kaylee. It has been great talking to you. Open RAN is estimated to grow at a CAGR of 54% between 2023 and 2035, reaching more than $6.6 billion and gathering a larger share of the RAN market as time passes. ORAN's role is crucial in the evolution of 5G and beyond, addressing both technical and geopolitical concerns by diversifying equipment sources and enhancing security and network infrastructure. We look forward to seeing how OpenRAN continues to provide new capabilities to the market, enabling network operators to provide us with faster speeds and newer services. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast. We look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk. Thanks again for tuning into Samsung Networks podcast, Networks Tech Talk. This marks our final episode of the series. We appreciate you listening and following along with the show. For more information on Samsung Networks and how we're redefining networks of the future, make sure to follow us on social media or learn more about our products and solutions at samsungnetworks.com.